Uh, welcome to episode three of the Beginner's Inexpensive Electronics Kit. Today we're going to be looking at the multimeter. Uh, this multimeter, um, it, it's an A-Put River AP42B, but it, it comes under other names too. And um, as I said before, we got it for about $22.95 plus tax, but recently I noticed that it, it had been put up to $36. Now, we're going to judge it today based on both of those prices to see if uh, you know indeed it was worth the $22.95 or is it worth the $36 um, and we'll go from there so let's let's get the thing opened up put some batteries in it uh, they give us these uh, these little dry cell batteries here they're, they're not alkalines which is okay because alkalines tend to leak these these don't tend to leak quite as much they won't they won't live as long but they again they won't leak which is good I think it was a little screwdriver with which to put it in. Nice bail in the back. Okay, so let's get in here. These feel like they're going directly into plastic, not into uh, metal inserts. Oh, that's nice. The, the fuses are easily available right here. Um, they're not, these are not uh, high explosion. Um, resistant fuses of any kind. They're not ceramic, they're not sand filled. They're just basic little 250 volt fuses. So I would take these ratings on the front with a, a huge grain of salt. I would not trust this to 600 volts or 300 volts even. It might be okay for doing, you know, checking out uh, appliances or household current in the US and, and North America, where you're not going much above 120 volts at any given time. But I certainly would not use this in a CAT 2 or CAT 3 environment up to 600 volts. There's just absolutely no way. Uh, I'm not going to bother opening this up. There are other videos on, on uh, YouTube where they've opened it up. There's nothing interesting to see inside. It's a basic little chip on board circuit. It's got, uh, I think, one little um, uh, positive temperature coefficient uh, protection for the meter itself. There's nothing as far as uh, metal oxide bar resistors and so forth in it for, for other protection. It's a very basic meter. Again, uh, it's basically you you'd use this entirely for um, electronics use you know it's not an industrial meter of any kind so all that said let's go ahead pop the batteries in i made a, a encouraging beep there let's get this back together now when you're putting these screws in these these threaded plastic back them up first until they go until you feel a click into place and then screw them in that way you're not cutting new thread this is a true for any self-tapping screws, even into metal, you, you want to do that. So you're not cutting new thread every time you put the screw in or take it out. Um, they last a lot longer that way. See, there's no UL listing on it. It's got a CE uh, certification, which is not really very meaningful. It doesn't say anything about the specifications or other promises as far as the meters um, accuracy or anything like that are concerned and it just means that it, it, it meets certain requirements for for sale in Europe uh, safety requirements and stuff like that um, and let's take this little cover off here which is not coming off very easily it's annoying okay there we go so it is a uh, Three and a half digit multimeter and let's get right into what comes with it comes with a set of probes here a user manual of sorts which goes through all the specifications of each of the current ranges and voltage ranges and resistance ranges capacity ranges frequencies and so forth what you'd expect as far as accuracy is concerned and what the uh the ultimate ranges are of them and uh, some very basic notes on, on how to use it. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a serviceable little sheet. Um, it's not bad. It gives you some good, uh, some good tips on how to, to do the different measurements that you want to do. Um, these probes, are, they're not great. I mean, like they're, they're not terribly soft or not terribly hard either. They're very, very plasticky. They're, you know, they're not the best probes in the world. But again, you know, we have to take the price into consideration. We have it also a temperature probe. I think it's probably a, a type K a thermocouple. So it should work in, on this meter and any other meter. Any other thermocouple would work as well. 
uh, type K. And um, let's first start out here by looking at what we have here. So we got, uh, oh, it, it has a non-contact voltage test. We can check that out over here. Here we go. You have to be right at the outlet to get it to work. So it, it does work though. Um, all right, so let's start by checking out the uh, voltage measurement. So let's get it in here to DC. It's nice push button control on it. You don't have a rot rotary switch on it to wear out, but I don't know how long these push buttons will last. It's, it's a, a different kind of interface. There's not many meters that are built like this. Now here's our, our, our voltage standard here. And um, this is set for the 10 volt range on it should be uh, somewhere 9.997. I have notes like that. So let's see how come how close we come to that. 10.004. That's well within their the the stated um, accuracy of the meter. So that that's fine. Now we can try some of the other voltage ranges here. Let's try the two and a half volt range too. So try something a little bit smaller. So that will take it into a different range in the meter itself. We won't go too far into this. 2.512 and that is measured at uh, 2.500. So yeah, we're we're well within specification there. That's not bad at all. Put it onto um, volts AC, and uh, I'm going to measure the mains with it. See if I can keep it in the. And this is as far as I would go, as far as high voltages are concerned. Now, that's about what we get around here: 117.8 volts. That's fine. And now let's try. Um, Let's try it ohms. Now I've got some uh, resistors here that I I know the values of. We'll check that, see how well it does. So the first one here is a one ohm resistor. It actually measures at 1.021. Let's see what this one comes up with. One point zero. That's that's good. Let's go up to the 10 ohm resistor that measures at 9.967. And it's reading at 10. Yeah, we're right within spec here. 100 ohm, 98.4. And the resistor is actually 98.567. So we're, we're doing pretty good here. 1K resistor, which measures at 992. And we've got 987 that's okay, that's off a little bit there and one thing we can do one thing that it does have is, is a relative uh, so we can take out any resistance that's in the leads of course that'll just make these readings a little bit lower uh, it's already doing pretty good there it's not really a lot to take out but we could try the rel mode anyway so let's take the next step up here 9.86 that should be 9.91 so it looks like in the higher ohms ranges there is about a 10% a, a error or 1% error 98 that's actually pretty good here at the 100k so it's 98.916 with the the resistor measures that and we're here at 98.3 so let's go to 1 mega ohm now 1.018 versus 1.025. Okay, so it's settled up here. 1.021. That's not too bad. What's in the middle ranges there? It seems to be just a tad out. This is supposed to be 9.929, and we got 9.929391. That's right on there. Okay, not too bad, not too shabby. Let's see how it does in uh, continuity mode here. Um, it's not last, but it's quick and it's nice and loud. The beeper is nice and loud. 
All right, now let's see how it does with, with diodes. So we'll put it on diode check. We have some diodes here. First of all, we have a Shakti diode uh, right here. And that should be by 237. Ah, well, you know, it, it depends on how much current it is being put through uh, as to exactly what voltage, but that's about right. Uh, you'd expect that. Here's a small silicon diode, a silicon signal diode and a silicon power diode. They're expected values, yep. Yeah. And here's a red LED, a 1.76, which is uh, pretty close to what I've measured before. And here's a blue LED. Let's actually find out what the uh, what voltage it is putting out for that test by uh, leaving in a different meter here to try and measure that. Three point nine volts. That's pretty good. Um, let's go on here to capacitance. He's got three capacitors here. The first one is nominally one hundred and fifty pf, which measures out at one hundred and forty-eight. One hundred and forty-four. Well, that's really good. That's that's quite acceptable. Now the next one up is one microfarad. It tests out at point nine four. 0.9.89. Okay, and this one here is a hundred microfarad. It might take a second too for this reading to occur. 103. It actually measures at 101.6. So that's that's not too bad. AC volts. Hertz. And we'll hook it up to a function generator here. We'll start off at one kilohertz. That's supposed to be able to go up to about 200 kilohertz. So one kilohertz is working pretty good. Let's give that a boost here up to 10 kilohertz. Yeah, it's right on. Yeah, let's take it up to 100,000 hertz. We leave the 200 on there to see if that gets swapped out. Ah, okay, so we're not. We're not able to measure the 100,000 hertz. Let's try increase the amplitude, see if that helps. So we're at two volts peak to peak. Let's go up to four volts peak to peak. No, not able to deal with that. So where do we lose it? Let's, let's try and find out where we lose this thing. Start bringing it down about 50 kilohertz 40 kilohertz 30 kilohertz 20 kilohertz okay we're okay at 20 kilohertz but uh, we lose it trying to go up from there let's stick that temperature probe in there see what that does Know that this room should be around about 17 degrees. We're showing 24. Let me compare that with something else. Here. It's be a bit warmer, a bit warmer day today. Brian is saying 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's change this to Fahrenheit, see what it says. They're saying 68 and 67. Ah, that's good enough for Canada, I guess. And now let's take it through some current. So I'll go through the Brian first and then through this meter here. You see, um, give me one minute, please, to set this up. All right, here we go. So we have 89.9 and 89. That's pretty good. Let's see if we can go down a little bit lower. 47 versus 47. 31, 32. I think 
think they're matching pretty good on the current range. I can't complain with that. Let's try a little bit higher currents. 1.21 milliamps. 2.4 milliamps. It's actually a little bit quicker reading than the Ryman is. Probably takes a little while to catch up. Of course, it's got another digit to worry about. A little bit different, a little bit different. But again, well within the, the accuracy of this. 247 milliamps. Okay, now I'm going to set it up for the app scale and uh, we'll try one or two readings in there. We've got one point five amps going into it. The Bryman's reading 1.50, 1.5057 and we've got 1.51 here. So again, very, very close. Let's see, we'll bring it up to maybe three amps. Uh, that's pretty good. Now the boat's supposed to be uh, able to do up to 10 amps, but that's only for 10 seconds on this one. Um, there's no time limit on the Bryman, but uh, let's not take it up too much further. I'll take, we'll take it up to five amps and see how it does up there. Five point oh two eight versus five point zero zero seven nine. So it it a tiny bit off on the on the amp range, but that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. This should be very serviceable meter, um, but just from the, the the feel of it, the way it feels and. Uh, the look the look is I don't know if you if you like this or not um, but uh, yeah I mean meters don't have a lot of style to them this one seems to try to, to get a little bit of style to it. Uh, it it either works for you it doesn't um, it's got a hold feature as well it's got the range selection maximum function which is really nice um, and it's got a backlight a very very nice backlight so that that is very effective. You should be able to see that anywhere, anytime, even probably in daylight, although you wouldn't need it then. I think it's a it's a decent meter for the $24. Is it worth the $36 that it costs right now? I'd have to say it, it's got some tough competition up there. Um, it, 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 is, it is handy size. Uh, most of the other meters in that range are a little bit bigger. Okay. Overall, I think this is probably going to be a great little meter for a, a beginner in electronics. It's going to do exactly what you need. So yeah, I think it's going to work out very well for us. Yeah. Well, thanks for viewing guys. We'll see you in the next video.